The Arch Gaming Network is proud to bring you this board game review. Now here's your host, Sean Smith. Hello and thank you for stopping by. Today we're going to be taking a look at the game Code Names by Vlada Shavatil and published by CGE Games. Now, since Codenames came out in 2015, it has racked up a number of rewards, including the 2015 Golden Geek uh, Best Party Game Award, the Best Family Board Game Award, uh, the 2015 um, Meeple's Choice Award, and the granddaddy of them all, BAM! The 2016 Spiels de Yars. Codenames is a party game uh, where you're using deduction, some memory, a little bit of pressure luck. And the premise is that you and your operatives are trying to meet on this grid of what will be clues. And you're going to be, as a clue giver, giving your operatives a one word clue. And that is where you're going to try to meet them. They have to try and guess what that correct clue is. And if they are, the operatives successfully meet. If not, they may run into the opponents, they may run into an innocent bystander, or hopefully they don't run into the assassin. <laughs> now the game plays two to eight players, but two players would be kind of odd. I think four is a good minimum, and eight is kind of arbitrary because you could actually play with uh, more than eight if you wanted to. Uh, it is a quick game to play. Let's take a look at the setup and a walkthrough, and I'll give you my thoughts on code names on the other side. Okay, to set up code names, you're going to take these double-sided clue cards or word cards, and uh, you're just going to pick 25 at random and create a five by five grid. You're then going to take the uh, blue agents and the red agents and put them in a pile. You have a double agent, and one of the teams will get this uh, and we'll explain that in just a minute. You then have these innocent bystanders, the assassin, and you just place those off to the side. A timer comes with the game, but the rules state that you really don't need to play with a timer. It's really up to you if, you know, you have somebody that's really slow, you can invoke it, but uh, we never play with the timer, so off it goes. You're then going to take one of these many key cards and whoever is going to be giving the clues, they will choose one, and only they will get to see it. They'll place it in this little holder, facing away from the rest of the players. Since this card has a blue symbol around the sides, this means that the blue team will get the double agent, and this means that they will have to guess one additional clue uh, to win the game, but they also get to go first. And that's how you set up the game. Let's get in and take a closer look at these cards and explain how it's played. Okay, as you can see, the cards are just a random assortment of one word clues. As a clue giver, it is your job to get your teammates to be able to guess the words that are associated with your team. So, by taking a look at this card, this represents the five by five grid. As you're looking at it, the top of the grid aligns with the top row. And of course, the bottom grid, the bottom row. So for the blue team, they are trying to get all of these words correct. The red team is trying to get all of those words correct. So for the blue team, you have wave, stream, cloak, fence, ship, K, 
kangaroo horoscope I'm sorry <laughs> microscope Mexico and straw and then the red team is trying to guess those the yellow are innocent bystanders and if your team picks where the black X is that means you have uh, pick the assassin and your team loses the game. Okay, when it's your turn to give a clue to your teammates, you're going to say a one word clue and you're going to try and use that clue to match multiple words if you can. So again, taking a look at the blue player who goes first, these are the uh, clues that she's going to be giving her teammates. And so maybe the blue team or the Clue giver would say, water, three. Now the number after the clue is the number of cards that she is saying match water. Now when you're giving uh, a clue, there are a few rules that you need to follow. Uh, your clue must be about the meaning of the word. Uh, your letters and numbers are valid clues, as long as they refer to the meanings. So you could use a clue like X, one, as a clue for x-ray or for ray and you could use eight three as a clue for ball figure and octopus eight ball figure eight and an octopus has eight legs but the number you say after your clue can't be used as a clue so say you used citrus eight you couldn't use that as a valid clue for lemon and octopus Citrus would be valid for lemon, but then if you're trying to use the eight for octopus, that's an invalid clue. You can't say any form of a visible word on the table. So, for example, ghost, you couldn't use a clue like ghostly. And you can't say a part of a compound word on the table. So until, like, microscope is covered, you can't use micro or scope as a clue for any other words. Now when it comes to homonyms and spellings, you have words in the English language that sound the same, like knight as in day and night, and someone who's dressed in armor as in that kind of knight, but they're two different words. So when you're giving a clue for knight as in day and night, you can't give clues related to the kind of knight that is dressed in armor. However, words that are spelled the same, but they have different meanings, are allowed, such as a bow. The example they give in the rules is that an actor can take a bow, and then the front of a ship is the bow. So you could use bow as a clue for both theater and ship. You can also spell out your clue instead of committing to a pronunciation. So you could say, B-O-W-3, and then you don't have to commit to it. And if at any time a player asks you to spell out a clue, you have to do so. There are other rules in the game as far as uh, the types of clues that you can give. Uh, they're simple, they're short, but you'll want to make sure to make uh, that you're familiar with those when you're playing. So now going back then to uh, this card, it's Blue's turn and she has said water three. So the other team will think about what those three cards could be. When the other team decides to pick one of the cards, they will point to it. If they are right, the clue giver will place one of their agents on that card. Now they can continue to guess or pass if they would like, but they're thinking, okay, a wave. That is also correct. Now they know there's one more out there. Hmm. Sharks are in water. So maybe they guess shark. Well, as you can see from the card, nope, that is unfortunately an innocent bystander. So it gets covered up like that. This means that their turn is over. There's no other penalty for it. It just covers up that clue and takes it out of the game. Now, if uh, they would have guessed that on their second turn, then their turn just would have been immediately over. But it was their third guess. They were done anyway. But now they know they were wrong, and there is another clue out there that matches water that they did not get. All right, looking at Red's turn, 
Here's the cards they have to get. So maybe the red team, or the red player, the clue giver, will say bird. Well, you have a phoenix, so they point to that. That'd be correct. And they see a hawk, so they point to that, and they get two correct. And now their turn is over. Okay, so now it's back to Blue's turn. And this is one of the clues. So let's say the Blue player just decides to play it safe and say, Jumpy won. Well, all the players come to agreement that this is probably the clue. So they point to that and they are correct. Now it's important to note that the uh, team can always take one extra guess over the number that the clue giver gave. That sounds confusing, <laughs> but she had said jumpy one and they got it. Now they can take one more guess. They know that there is still a clue out there regarding water that they didn't get from the previous round. So with that extra pick, they can now choose to take that, a guess at it or pass and their turn would be over. But they're gonna go for it and they're going to say, well, it was probably ship, and then they'd be right. Now their turn is over. Blue team is in the lead, four to two. It's back to red. Play will now alternate back and forth until one team runs out of all of their operatives, or if someone accidentally picks the assassin. If you get rid of all your operatives first, you're the winner. If you pick the assassin, your team immediately loses, and that's how you play code names. Okay, so code names is definitely a good game. It it, it has a solid foundation. Uh, the components, uh, you know, you have your operatives and your assassin and your uh, innocent bystanders. They're they're thick. Uh, they'll hold up uh, nicely. Um, you get a lot of these pattern cards for you to decide, you know, which clues are, are you going to be giving. And then of course you have a lot of the clue cards themselves. This is just half of them. And they're, you know, they're, they're double-sided as well. So there's definitely a lot of replayability in this game. As far as the gameplay, it, it, it is a lot of fun. If, uh, you remember the, the old school game of Password. It, it really is kind of like that, but this one uh, kicks it up a little bit as well because of the fact that you can try to combine one clue into multiple words that are on the board. As far as a party game goes, I, you know, the classification of a party game, it plays up to eight and you have, you know, two teams that are competing. So in that regards, yeah, it certainly makes a good party game. It's not going to be one of those uh, uproarious, lot of laughter type of party games. It's because this game's a little thinky, but it's easy and people can really get into it. So it really is fun. And since it plays quick, a lot of times you get to mix up the teams. Uh, everybody, you know, might be able to get a chance to, you know, play the uh, clue giver. And uh, that makes it, you know, just really re enjoyable to play. So this is a fun game. Definitely something that can be used with a larger group. Uh, with the teams in it, uh, you know, it, it makes more people comfortable um, when, you know, if they're, they think they're maybe they're, they wouldn't be as good at guessing the clues, but since there's kind of more of a team cooperative nature to it, it, it certainly lends itself, uh, you know, to a party. So I definitely think that it has deserved the awards that it's won. Solid game. I give it an 8 out of 10. If you've enjoyed this video, please leave a like below, subscribe to our channel for other videos, and once again, thank you for stopping by. Thank you for visiting the Arch Gaming Network. For more great content, check us out at archgamingnetwork.com. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, follow us on Twitter, and like us on Facebook.